Good morning. Good morning to all the live streamers or at Agape, we call you love streamers. <laughs> and uh, shout out to Reverend Mark or Dr. Mark as I like to call him. Uh, thank you so much for, for leaving your heart for creating this space and leaving me with these incredible, incredible people today for trusting me with that. I sang here before, but it's the first time I spoke here, so that's trust. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here today and for bringing your light to this room. Thank you so much. So, as you said, uh, everywhere I go, people say, provide me with a bio. <laughs> and uh, much like Mark, I'm not huge into titles and status and all of these things. Uh, but everybody wants that wherever I go because that is important to the people. Uh, it's called, uh, in the speaking world, it's called to earn the right. You know, why should you listen to me? What have I been through? What have I done? Why should you trust me or listen to me? So everywhere I go, I have to provide that. And for so many years, it was like, uh, okay. Right? But I realized at one point it was a gift to me. It was a gift for that little voice in my head that says, you don't do enough. You haven't touched enough hearts yet. Uh, so when I hear all the things that I've done, that helps me bring, bring me back to center and remember uh, the things that I've done because at each place that I spoke with those people or sang with those people, I was touching lives and touching hearts. And uh, so as I said before, uh, what is and will always be my message is that you make a difference in this world. Wherever I go, you're going to hear me say that over and over again until it really lands. Uh, we make a difference every day, whether we know it or not. Every time we say hi. Uh, I heard a story one time that uh, somebody, the, the checker at the grocery store, said, w would you like help out to the car to a person? And that person said, sure. And they helped him to the car and they loaded up and had a conversation and sent the person off. And like a week later, that person came back to the checker and said, I want you to know that I was going to take my life that day. Like, I didn't think anybody cared about me at all. And you said, hi, and can I help you to the car? And you talked me all the way to the car and you helped me and you sent me off. And I just realized that maybe I do have a purpose. And so I stayed here. And so thank you. A grocery store, <laughs> right? A grocery store box boy saved a life. So that's how much we make a difference. And we don't even know. So who's Keith Leon? I was uh, born in California in 1960-something. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my parents were divorced about age of two, two and a half. Anybody divorced parents? Yeah, okay. Mom. Manic depressive, barely get out of the bed. Anybody see uh, Who's Eating Gilbert Grape? Yeah, yeah that was my mom. Um, so that left the, my sister, who was a teenager, to raise me, uh, along with my grandmother and anybody else who would pitch in. Anybody have that experience in their life? Raised by others? And, uh, but my mom, the one thing that she taught me was unconditional love. There was not one thing I could do that could ever get her to not love me. And what a powerful message she brought to me. All the rest I just felt like was stuff once I really landed with that. And she taught me a lot of ways that I didn't want to be, and that was very powerful too. Uh, <laughs> you know, my whole family, manic depressive, everybody. Anybody relate to that one? Manic depressive, thank you. Uh, and uh, so I just realized at a young age that I, I felt like, you know, everybody has that. So some people label it and some people don't. But wherever I look, it seems like people are complaining about things and they're really depressed about things. So I was like, that's just kind of part of life. So I guess it's up to me to turn that around and, and decide whether I was going to have another experience. Because Lord knows I was going to be surrounded by depression. So... Uh, so uh, I'm a uh, recovering Mormon. Anybody recovering from another religion they grew up with? The whole family are Mormons. And uh, I never really vibed with that, uh, 
with that religion. And so uh, as soon as I was old enough to make my own decisions, left that. And I went on a search. I went on a search for God because I never really felt it in that church. And everyone was saying that there was this God out there. And I was like, oh, I'd really like to experience that because I'm not feeling it. So I did an extensive search. I went to every synagogue, every mosque, every temple. If there was someone on a soapbox in a park, I was listening. Right? I was there and I was listening and I was like, tell me, who is this God? Where is this God? And I looked and I looked and I searched and I searched. And I never found it out there. And anybody, where do you think I found God? Right here. When I finally sat down and I turned off the noise, turned off the chatter, turned off the radio, turned off uh, the voices in my head and just, just sat in the silence, that is where I found God. And uh, so I got a song about that. Can you cue up that song, please? Here we go. My life, it had no peace till I found God. There was a missing part of me till I found God. There was nothing else to see till I found Just a mess till I found God. I didn't know no happiness till I found God. Now there's nothing else I So my wish for you, my friend, is for this peace that never ends. You'll find it in the deepest place. Carry it with you on your way. And there's nothing else I need. No, there's nothing. God, developing my relationship with God, and breathing into and living into and walking to be all that I know that God is, and it seems like wherever I go, there's people and places and things trying to tell me the opposite of what I downloaded. Huh. 
I turn on the TV and it's like all negative all the time, all negative all the time. It's so bad out there. It's so bad. Oh my God, there's murder, there's devastation, there's poverty. Oh my God, it's all so horrible. And I'm buying in, I'm buying in, I'm buying in. But I got a job in TV. And this strange thing happened. The more that I was in TV, the more I found out that it was pure BS. <laughs> I had to sign, sign papers that I wouldn't tell that stuff that was on the news that night was purely fabricated. And that 10%, maybe 10% of what you hear in the media is truth. And that the other 90% is built to sell you products. To make you not good enough. Lord forbid you should have luring around the collar. <laughs> right? Or wrinkles, or not drive the perfect car, or not eat the perfect food, or not wear the right makeup, not go to Lowe's to get your stuff. <laughs> we live in a consumer nation, they want to sell us stuff, and everything is created and built to scare us into buying this stuff. Imagine sitting there while they're making up a story and they're riffing at the table about, uh, ooh, how to spin it to make it even better bring a video news release with people talking on camera and blah, and then go home to the news and turn it on and watch it that night. I was, drove me away from news altogether. So big tip, biggest thing you could do ever in your life, turn off CNN. Yeah. <laughs> turn off the news. My wife calls it the olds because there's nothing new happening. There. <laughs> it's old, old news. And, and if you notice the same stories, like yeah. keep over and over again and like one week something's bad for you and the next week it's good for you and then it's bad for you and it's good for you and it's good for you and bad for you. And bad for you. <laughs> Craziness. So I just want to share that with you. I love to share that with everybody. I'm sure sooner or later I'll hear about it. <laughs> so, so that's the media telling us that we're not good enough, right? But who told you that you weren't good enough? Ah, mom and dad. Who else? Teachers, grandma. Teachers, grandma. Religion. Who else? Religion. Minister. Religion. 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 Mm -hmm. Religion. Playmates. Religion. Yes. Teachers. Teachers. All right. Interesting that somebody said myself, because uh, I call this voice in in my head, I, and and when I teach my uh, in my writing programs, I call that voice the little liar, <laughs> because it never tells the truth. Right? You, when you're in the power and your strength and you're, you know who you are and you're standing in that, it would never say such things to you. He would only say, you can do this. This or greater you can achieve. Go, go, go. Would, be your, would root you on, always. That's, the, that's you. And anything else is a lie. That's the little liar. So what we do in our course is we identify this little liar. We put a voice on it. We say, who was it? That's why I asked you the first question. Who was it that told you? Right? Because when you can know who the voice was, then you can see the, see the voice, see who it was, put a voice on it, put a face on it. Right? And then we create a tool to get rid of it. Right? So uh, just as quick as I can tell it, that tool is an affirmation. So sometime when you're in your power, maybe coming out of a meditation, create a affirmation. That is the truth about you when you're in your strength. And then when that little liar comes up, use that affirmation. So say that affirmation and say it and say it until that something happens with that little liar. Either evaporates, turns into dust, turns into a baby, disappears, whatever happens. And when that happens, you know you've got the right affirmation. So when that little liar comes in, you can say, I am a loving, trusting man living in my joy and sharing my heart. Mm. When I created that affirmation, I did not believe any of that. <laughs> didn't believe I was loving, didn't trust anybody, didn't feel worthy, didn't feel like I was sharing my heart or living my joy. Now I share that, everybody goes, duh, hello. <laughs> You no, know, because I said it enough times. I said it, when I created it, I said it a hundred times for 33 days. Wow. Every day. I am a loving, trusting, worthy man living in my heart and sharing my joy. I reprogrammed my mind to believe that that's true. And once I believed it and reprogrammed my mind and stepped into that, everybody was like, yeah, okay. You better get a new one. <laughs> I've already done that. 
So, uh, so I'm going to go against everything that your inner critic said, and I'm going to tell you that you're whole, complete, and perfect just as you are. That you're made in the image and likeness of God itself, and that you, just like God, have never, ever, 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 ever made a mistake. And that even if it looked like a mistake, you created it to teach you a lesson. Right? So really the question is, what can I learn from this? What can I learn from this? How is this for me, and what can I learn? Because if we went to all that work to create it, we might as well learn something from it. <laughs> and if we miss the lesson, why go through all the pain? Why go through the hurt? And then miss the lesson and recreate it again, 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 again. You are whole, complete, and perfect just as you are. You have never, ever made a mistake. Anything that felt like a mistake was for you. I see you. I know who you really are. Hmm. And I see in this moment you know who you are too. Thank you for that. I'm feeling that. Hmm. So, when life has you down, because sometimes stuff gets us down, right? This is just me. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff can get you down. Can I get an amen? amen. Thank you. <laughs> when life gets you down, what I would suggest <coughs> is to pray it away. Pray it away. Hmm. What do I mean by that? Ah. <laughs>
Thank you. So that's where to go. Just pray it away. There's this thing that uh, we teach a lot in experiential workshops, and that's how to go from yuck to yippee. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what are some ways that you're able to go from yuck to yippee? Let's go shout them out. Sing. Sing. Singing. Dancing. Music. Writing. Dancing. Dancing. Writing. Poetry. Nature. Poetry. Nature. Hugging. 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 Yes, yes, yes. Kissing. Kissing. Ooh, I like that one. <laughs> Those are all awesome. Isn't that playing with your cat. And I love that. And it's so different for all of us. And every one of them is absolutely right. Because again, you're perfect. You don't make any mistakes, right? Uh, I would add meditation, affirmations, affirmative music. And this one thing that uh, I had a mentor who you would know who shared something with me. He said that you are the five people that you hang out with the most. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So think about that. Who are you hanging out with? Which five people? And notice, is that true? So I'm constantly thinking that about that. Who am I hanging out with? Who am I hanging out with? Who am I hanging out with? Because I know that I will be those five people. If I'm hanging out with people that are complaining and think that life sucks all day long, it won't be long before I'm right with them. If I want to have a life of success and remember who I am, the truth of who I am, then that's who I need to hang out with. I'm blessed enough that my partner knows who I am. It reminds me constantly of that. So there's one. <laughs> right, so how about the other four? <laughs> and so uh, we are the five people that we hang out with the most. And so uh, this person, this energy, this whatever we believe God is, uh, is in everyone. And so let's align with those people that are, that are the closest to what we believe that is. So that we can just fill up and fill up and fill up and, and give them too our love and our heart and remind them that we can be one of their five people and give back to them all the love that they give us because everything's like a breath in and out, right? They give you love, I give you love. They give me love, I give you love. That's what we did in meditation this morning for anybody that missed that. So I believe that God is in, as, and through everything. It is the breath that I breathe, it is energy, it is the flowers, it is a tree. It's just, it's just everything. And uh, the yin and the yang. And I believe that God is your very breath. And I've got a song about what I think God is. Yes, there's only one solution. Yeah, yeah. What I found is all oh so simple. A deeper love, an inner temple. And I found it in the stillness of my soul. Because I believe that all. There is is God. Anybody with me? Oh yeah, all there is is God. Sing it with me now. Sing it with me now. All there is is God. Yeah, sounds so beautiful. No 
knowing that my good is overflowing and my faith is ever growing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, take me back to the beginning. I feel the spirit moving in me. Make me stronger. Make me with this thing called the universe that people call God in co-creation. And, you know, Jesus, the master teacher, was all the time saying this. So I've wondered forever, why, why, does, why does nobody get that when they go to the other churches? And they're, they're like, Jesus said all day long, as you believe it is done unto you, speak the word, believe in that you have and you'll receive. Amen. Hello. <laughs> I say if Jesus was here right now, he'd be walking around going, is this thing on? <laughs> of the law of attraction that I know of and documented his walk the earth. All day long, if you have the faith in the mustard seed, you can go on and on. Right? One time, I am the way and the light. Right? Maybe someone wrote it down wrong. Right? The only way through me. Every other time, it was like, no, you, you. I do not do the miracle. It is your faith in me. Your faith in God. Yeah. Right? King James Version was created because everyone was reading this book that made him not afraid of King James anymore, and they wouldn't pay him taxes. <laughs> so he ordered them to go out and grab all of the Bibles, grab all the books, and burned all but one, and rewrote it. Before King James, no devil. Yes, no devil, no Satan, no hell. Before King James, it was a book of love. The things that I'm sharing with you today, that's what that book was, before King James. Huh. 
maybe look at the Bible before King James <laughs> if you want to base your whole faith on a book. Maybe you want to go back on the translation, right? Devil got crazy thought. That's what Satan is, crazy thought. So, if crazy thought is devil, yeah, sure, he's alive and well today. <laughs> and as a person, but every time I think anything opposite of all is good, all is well. Love, 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 love. That's what I got from Jesus when I read the book. Love, love is the answer to every question. Love, mm, love, Where's the money? Love. Love. Once you really breathe into that, that which the Master Teacher walked on this earth and ultimately died for, right? And what Gandhi stood for and what Martin Luther King stood for, all these avatars, what Buddha stood for, they all said love, love, love is the answer. John Lennon, love, love, love. And we feel into that energy, we feel into that message. Ah. Love is all there is. Yeah. Yeah. And we can walk this earth every day looking at the clouds and <laughs> the world around us. And people when they're trying to lie to us. And we can truly know that God is all there is and that every day every moment Every breath is a God thing. Hmm. It's a God thing. Every time I see a sunset, all the birds take to flight. Thank my spirit for the next breath Cause I know everything's alright I used to feel so empty I wasn't sure of anything at all You know I thought I was disconnected But I never even picked up the phone to call God showed me who I am a brand new way to be Ever since I found this out It's so good to be me Cause it's a God thing Every day of my life It's a God thing Every day of my life I don't waste my time thinking about the future And I forgave myself for the past You know, when I stepped into this moment I found myself at last God showed me who I really am And how awesome life can be ha. Ever since I heard the truth it's so good to be me Cause it's a God thing Every day of my life Oh, it's a God thing Every day of my life Come on, Mel.
Let's break it down. I mean, way down. It seems my world is a reflection of who and what I choose to be. I always thought someone else was in charge. Didn't know that someone was me. But now I know who I really am. And all my friends will agree. Yeah. That ever since I found the sweet, sweet spirit. It's so good to be me Cause it's a God thing Every day of my life Don't you know it's a God thing Each and every day of your life Whoa, it's a God thing And hey, ain't it great to be alive Whoa, it's a God thing Here we go now Every single day of my life Every single day of my life It's a God thing 